Okay. So today's lesson, conditional probability. So we're going to talk about independent and dependent events. So a dependent event is when our first probability affects our second probability. So let me give you an example. If we have a deck of cards, okay, and I ask you to pick a card, can you pick your card? Okay, now, if I, and I say, okay, what's the probability that's a diamond? What is the probability it's a diamond? One out of four, yeah, 13 out of 52, one out of four. If I say you can put the card back again, and I said, okay, for your second card, what is the probability you're going to choose a diamond? Would it change if you're allowed to put it back? No, it wouldn't change. And so those, those are independent probabilities, independent events. If I said, what's the probability of picking a diamond? You pick your diamond, one out of four, and I, I ask you, now don't put that card back. What's the probability of picking a second diamond? 12 over 51, 12 over 51. So when the second event probability is affected by the first. So if I ask you, pick a diamond and a diamond. So the first diamond, we have 13 out of 52 diamonds. You don't put it back. The second diamond, how many diamonds left? 12, how many cards total left? 51, okay? So that's the type of problems we're going to deal with today, and those are called dependent events. So what I'd like you to do, if you have to work with a partner or whatever, uh, look at this problem. Jackie plays a volleyball team on a volleyball team called the Giants. The Giants are in a round-robin tournament with five other teams. The teams that they will play against will be selected at random. Determine the probabilities. Their first game will be the Clippers. And their second game will be against the Maroons. Hmm? And then round rounds. And then after that, it doesn't matter who they play. Okay? So there's two ways to solve this. You can use your knowledge of permutations and combinations. Right? Does order matter here? Yes. The order does matter. Else there will only be one way to do it. There's five teams, right? We, we want to say, who do you play first? Who do you play second? Who do you play third? So we can use our good old dash mentality if we want even. Uh, you could do the pick, or you can do the picking, right? Because order matters. So your first team, you want specifically the Clippers, and the second team, you want specifically the Maroons. Uh, well, for the first team, one pick one. Second team, one pick one. Because you want specifically the Clippers first. And then specifically the Maroon second. And then for the other three teams, or three, now there's three left over, three places to put them, three pick three. I find it easier to do this. Who do we want here? Clippers. So how many Clippers are there? One. How many Maroons are there? One. Now how many teams do you have to put here? Three, two, one. Or you could have done one pick one times one pick one times three pick three. Three pick three would also be three factorial, which is six. So we get six ways to do that. How many total ways then would be if we do a round robin? So what, how many choices do I have for this first spot? How many teams do we have? Five. So five, how many left to choose from? Four, so it's five factorial, or what's five factorial? 120, so what's our probability of having C first then M? Six over 120, or? 1 over 20? Do you agree with that? Yep, okay. Uh, I'm going to show you another way. Okay, so we want to first pick the Clippers and then pick the Maroons. So probability that we first get the Clippers and then we get the Maroons. 
the probability of C times probability of M, given that C has occurred. So that vertical line is a new symbol. Okay, so the probability of M, given that the C has occurred. Well, this is going to be our lesson today. What's the probability of getting clippers to play first? One out of? One out of five. Times, what's the probability of the maroons being second, given that the clippers are first? One out of? Four. One out of four. What's one-fifth times one-fourth? Remember fractions, you go straight across. One out of 20. One over 20. Okay? So in an and situation, we want clippers or the clippers first and then maroon. Now this is a situation that is dependent because the second probability was changed because of the first. <laughs> What? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what he said. Okay, this is a fun lesson. And I might throw a YouTube video for homework to, for you to watch. Yeah. Because it's... Whoa. Okay. Uh, if the probability of one event depends on the probability of another event, then these events are called dependent events. For example... So this I'm highlighting here. Drawing a heart from a standard deck of 52 and then drawing another from the same deck without replacing. Right? Then the second depends on the first. They're dependent events. If B depends on A, we call this conditional prob probability. That makes sense, right? It's conditional on what happened with uh, A. So given that A has occurred, can be represented as following. So there's two formulas. Um, you might want to write this one down. It's also on the next page. So uh, this one really stems from here. So probability of A and B happening. Probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And this vertical line, usually a little bit bigger, means given that A has occurred. And so we can rearrange this formula to be for to solving for probability of B given that A by dividing both sides by the probability of A. So the probability that B has occurred given that A has is equal to probability A probability of A and B divided by uh, divided by the probability of A. Okay? So um, these are not on your formula sheet, correct? So uh, I would say this is the one that you should know, and then you can always rearrange it if you have to. And this one makes sense. And then we can rearrange it if we have to. Okay. Uh, turning the page. You're going to have to add a little equal sign. Their equal sign's a little faint there. Talked about that. So we're often going to use a special type of tree diagram. A little bit different than the ones you're used to. Can't see. Good. Can you wait? Can it be team? <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what does this mean? And. It's the intersection. And when we have and, we're going to have multiplication. Right? Or translate to addition. And intersection translates to multiplication and probability. Okay, so let's go on, because I'll just show you an example. Oh, let's take away to this. Whoop. No, you didn't. <laughs> Valerie draws a card from a well-shuffled standard deck of 52 cards. The, what does it say? Oh, then she draws another card from the deck without replacement. Without replacement. Is this dependent or independent? What? Do we agree who says dependent? Yeah? You just give me like the, you don't want to put your hand up. You just give me like a little hidden thumbs up. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Okay, so dependent. Why is it dependent? 
she doesn't put it, put it back. So the second probability is different because she doesn't put that first card back. Okay, we kind of looked at this, right? So we want the probability that we have a diamond. Guys, what's going on? We're doing <laughs> meant to do that. Okay, probability that we have a diamond first and then a diamond second. So we'll see here. So how are we going to get that? Let's make our little formula. So first we do probability of picking the first diamond. Time, because they're dependent events, probability of picking another diamond given that given that, that the first card was a diamond. Makes it look like smart. <laughs> oh, no, no. No. Well, I'm just, no. Just trying to get us used to the formula that you're used to right now. Okay, what's the probability you pick a diamond? 13 out of 52. What's the probability of picking another diamond given that you already pulled one out and did not replace it? 12 out of 51. Somebody multiply these, please. What? Yeah, let's reduce this. Math, enter, enter. We get 117. Or 0 0.0588. Yeah, and you got 117? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, in math, right, in multiplication of fractions, we go straight across. We could go 13 times 12, and then 52 times 51, and then divide them. Let me see. Okay, let's see. You didn't multiply them. I just, I'm simplifying them first. Oh, so 1 over 4. 1 over 4, then, times 4 over 17, and then go math, enter, enter, 117. Okay, uh, moving on. That wasn't so bad, right? <laughs> That's Valeria. That's a pretty name. Draws a card from a well-shuffled deck. 52 cards, then she puts the card back. Dependent or independent? Independent. Why? Because she puts the card back. So the second probability is not affected by the first. Great, 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 great. So the formula is really easy. So determine the probability that both cards are diamonds. So in an independent event, the probability of A and B occurring, they're completely separate. So it's just, there's no overlap. We have probability of A times the probability of B. There's no given that, because we put the card back. So if I wrote it in terms of diamonds first and diamonds second, which is the probability of diamonds first times the probability of another diamond. And are these going to be the same probabilities then? Yeah. Each time. If we keep putting the card back, it doesn't affect our chances. So what's the probability of picking a diamond? 13 out of 52 times 13 out of 52. Let's reduce these first. What is 13 out of 52 reduced to? So 1 over 4 times 1 over 4 is 1 over 16. So far, so good? Um, well, we, it's your, you trust me. <laughs> Just let's keep going. Oops. Now we have it. Not for the homework. 
I haven't covered. Oh, and we have to cover the tree dependent question. The special tree we have to drop. Okay, let's just try this guy first. <laughs> okay. Nathan asks. Riel? Riel? That's a cool name, too. Pretty name. To choose a number between 1 and 40. And then say one fact about the number. So, for example, pick a number from 1 and 40 in your head. Say I chose 5. I could say it's a prime number. Or I could say it's a multiple of 5. Or I could say... No, that, that has to be a fact about the number. No. <laughs> it has to be a number fact. A number property. Riel says that her number that's chosen is a multiple of four. Guys? Jess, you can move your desk back, please. Thank you. Determine the probability that the number is also a multiple of six. Okay, so uh, let's let A be what? Our multiples of? Which multiples? Four. Yeah, we're going to need four. We're going to need multiples of six. So let's start with four. So what are the numbers that are multiples of four up to 40? Four, then A. 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. Okay, what's B going to be then? Multiples of 6. No, you missed one. 18. Oh, you're just too fast for me, Jesse. Okay, so are these to totally separate events or is there going to be some overlap here? Yeah. Okay, so here, what's my probability of A occurring? Well, let's, let's, here, let's do this. Let's write out our formula, right? Probability, probability of A and B is equal to what? Probability of A times the probability of B. Now, are they completely separate or are they, no? So given that A has occurred, what is this question asking me for? Determine that the, bro the number is also a multiple of 6. So we're looking for what's the probability that it's a mul multiple of 6 given that, do we know it's already a multiple of A? Yeah. We know, right, given that it's a multiple of A, it's looking for, it's determine the probability that the number is also a multiple of 6. We're looking for this probability. The probability it's a multiple of 6, given that it was a, a multiple of 4. Could we figure out the probability of A and B occurring? Where would our A and B be? Both of them. What's, how many are in both? So we have 12, we have 24, and we have 36. So how many, no, how many are in that double circle? So if you put the numbers 12, 24, and 36, there's three of them. There's three of them. So we know that this is three out of how many total numbers are we dealing with here? in this problem? 40. The number is 1 to 40. Okay. Do, could we figure out the probability of A occurring? Yeah? How many are in A? 
10? Yeah, 10 out of 40? Okay, so could we solve for this guy? Yeah, we know two, we're looking for the third. So we want to rearrange the formula. So what can we do to this formula to get this all by itself? Divide by both sides by P of A. So the probability that it's B, given that A has already occurred, we know it's already a multiple for, is equal to the probability of A and B all over the probability of A. This is going to be a tough assignment. <laughs> yeah, you mean it's going to be so easy. Okay, what's A and B? 3 over 40 divided by the probability of A. Now, if you wanted to type this into your calculator all at once, And so I feel like I can die in peace now because you guys know when to use brackets. Brackets, yay! Okay. So what is equal? A little hint. When the bases are both the same of both fractions, what happens is that they're both going to cancel out. Because you're doing 3 over 40, divided by 10 over 40. Remember when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, and so these reduce out, so it's going to give you 3 over 10 or 0.3. Did anyone not get that in their calculator? Don't be ashamed. Cause can these? Because this is a probability, favorable over total, right? Probability is always favorable over total. And there's, right? And there's numbers between 1 and 40, so this, right. Okay, how was that? A little bit more? Yeah? Okay, another one. What? Take that away. Oops. No, it's not. Don't do this to me. You do this to me all the time. We have 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. According to the survey, now when we see percents, are we actually using percent in our calculations? No, we have to do what to them? Fraction or decimal. So let's just change it to a decimal. 0 0.91. 0 0.91. So according to a survey, 91% of Canadians own a cell phone. Okay. Of these people, this is going to be a, that that's very important. Of these people, so they are dependent, right? So that's meaning. These ones already own a cell phone, so the ones already have a cell phone, they also have a smartphone. Okay, so let's do what with this number here? 0.42. So 42% of those who have a cell phone also have a smartphone. Determine the, to the nearest percent the probability that any Canadian, any Canadian, you met during the month in which the survey was conducted would also have a smartphone. Okay? Well, let's start with le like calling our set something. So I'm going to use C as representing not Canadians, cell phone. Okay? Uh, S would be then those who have a smartphone. Okay. So we're going to make our formula that we're used to. So what would it look? So the probability that they have 
both, right? How do we show both? This cell phone and and smartphone. Oops, I always kind of do that with my and. It's like making an A. Because and. I know, and then they look the same. That's the worst. Yeah, yeah math problem. <laughs> I should write and make a new Twitter thing. He'll try. Math problem. Okay, is equal to the probability of which occurring? C? Now, did we agree that this is independent or dependent? Guys, come on. Don't make me put back that cleaning time. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Good job, guys. Yeah. I think I have you in a Okay, so for the people at home, let's stay on track. <laughs> the probability of what? Smartphone, given that, see always the other one, given that they already have a C. Okay, so which, ones of the, which one of these do we know so far? Which probabilities do we know? Okay, we know the probability of having a cell phone is what? 91. 0.91. Okay. Um, do we know? Do we know uh, this guy? The probability of a smartphone given that they already have a cell phone. Let's read our sentence. According to the survey, 91% of Canadians own a cell phone. Of these people, 42% have smartphones. Yeah, so is that this? The probability of a smartphone given that they already have a cell phone? Of these people, of these people that have cell phones, they have a smartphone. So we have equals 0.42. So when they say Anyone in Canada that they have a smartphone? If they have a smartphone, do they also have a cell phone? If you have a cell phone, Jesse, ignore the question. If you have a cell phone, do you, or sorry, a smartphone, do you also have a cell phone? Yeah. So we're looking for the probability a Canadian has a cell phone and a smartphone, right? They because they're if they have a cell phone, they're going to have a smartphone. Oh wait, other way around. Okay. Oh, I did it again. Okay, equals, so 0 0.91 times 0 0.42. What does that give me? That's where you have to go ding, 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 ding. 0 0.38 two cubed. Okay. So um, they give it as a percent in the question, so let's give it as an answer uh, as a percent. So what's the probability a Canadian has a smartphone? 38.22%. All right. So I think that's it for today, right? There's not a question on the next test? No. Now we missed the other type, so I might want to look at your, one of your homeworks with you, if that's okay. If everyone can grab their homework, you're going to omit uh, number eight, numerical response number eight, I think. What page are we on? Page, no, no, it'd be more like 70 or 80. 71? Thanks. 71? Oh. Yeah, 0. 0.5, 3.5, so 71 or 70. Uh, the question starts at 71, so you all up to number nine, but omit number eight. You can omit number eight. Okay, now you're gonna wanna probably look at the homework solutions online when you're working through this this weekend. Yeah, it really helps, especially with this stuff. It's really important. Uh, what I wanna do with you is look at a problem. Yeah, uh, let's look at number five together. Okay, look at number five on your homework. 
Oh, I should open. Mm. Oh, I do have it here. Okay, look at number five. I believe this is what it says. And this is an example of one of those tree diagrams. Number five in your homework. Okay. Eileen, Eileen, sorry, Eileen. Am I still recording? Yeah, good. Likes to go for a daily jog. If the weather is nice, she is 95% likely to go for a jog. If the weather is rainy, she is only 50% likely to go for a jog. No. Number five? Number five? Oh. For five kilometers. Yeah, it does nothing to the question. Okay. No, it doesn't. Uh, the weather forecast for tomorrow indicates a 35% chance of rain. Determine the probability that Eileen will go for a job. So the first thing we're going to start off with is our probability it's going to rain. Okay, so what's the probability that it's going to rain? So as a decimal, 0.35. So that means, what's the probability that she, there's no rain? 0.65, how'd you get that, Jesse? No, okay, <laughs> more specific. How do we get 0.65? 1 minus 0.35, right? Adds all our total probability as to 1. Okay, now let's go back. It says, so let's look at where it rains. If the, or let's go to nice, I guess. If the weather is nice, so that's no rainy, I guess, is nice, I would assume. She is 95% likely to jog. So we have jog and no jog. You'll see. Okay? It's, there's, they're dependent event, and it depends on, each one depends on the last. You have to just write small. Okay, so what's the probability she goes for a jog if it's nice? 0. 0.95. So what's the percent no jog if it's nice? 0. 0.05. Okay, so if it's rainy outside, we have jog or no jog? If it's rainy outside, what's the probability of, what does it say? Uh, it's, she's 50% likely to jog. So if it's rainy, 50% likely to jog, meaning how likely is she to not jog? 50%. Okay? I'm sorry. It is really tight, hey? Might want to write this. I don't know. I can't help you there. <laughs> I, it's a Jesse, you with us? Determine the probability that Eileen will jog. So we want the probability she'll jog. So there's two situations. What are the two situations? It rains and she goes for a jog, or it's sunny and she goes for a jog. So how do we get the probability that it's raining and she goes for a jog? You look no, you look at these two. What do we do when it's and situation? So rain and jog times them. So this will be 0 0.35 times 0 0.5 gives us? No, half of 0 0.35 is going to be point set 175. <laughs> so this is a this one in this problem we have um, in the other problems, we just had kind of like this situation. Just one dependent, just we're looking at one stream. Okay, this is two different dependent situations. Now, no rain in a job, how do we get no rain in a job? 0. 0.65 times 0. 0.95, which gives us, I don't know, Ashley, what do you get? Six. One seven five. So how do we get the probability that she's going to go for a jog? What do you think you're going to do here? Add them together. So the probability that she's jog would be the probability of rain and jog 
for the probability of no rain in a job. So we're going to add these together. Gives us a whopping 79%. She is more motivated than I am. Look at that much. Oops, sorry. Last year? This year? Wow. <laughs> I didn't know she was jogging still. Man, that, that is more... Well, not in, not in the winter so much. Springy, but not springy like this. Like slushy springy. But. Okay, so uh, these problems are tough, right? These ones are going to be a little bit tougher for drawing. You might want to try number nine. Nine's kind of very similar to number four if you want to try one right off the bat. The solutions are online. Uh, really... Unfortunately, that's really all we have time for today because it's a short day. So I, please do your best to attempt the problems tonight. Yay.